always pick a 12 over a 5. Senior leadership is what wins in March. Defense wins championships. Don't pick all one seeds in your final four. Seemingly, everyone has advice for how to fill out your bracket. And let's be honest, most of it is pretty useless. If you want to give yourself the best chance to win a pool, analyzing historical trends or even breaking down individual matchups for opponent strengths and weaknesses is arguably just a waste of time. But on the other hand, the you can't predict March Madness, it's all just luck and randomness, people aren't exactly right either. Yes, the nature of a single elimination tournament does lead to a lot of randomness. Upsets are called upsets for a reason. And there is no secret formula to guarantee bracket success. But there is a way to at least move the odds in your favor. And that's with the concept of the value pick. The word value in relation to brackets means it's not just about who you pick. It also matters who the other people in your pool pick. It's a concept that actually won me my bracket pool last year. I thought Gonzaga was the best team in the country and the most likely to win it all. But even despite that, I intentionally didn't pick them in order to improve my pool odds. I was more concerned about getting the right value. In this video, I'll explain the details of that strategy and why it worked for me. Before we start, I want to extend an invitation to join the official Hoop Vision bracket pool for this year. I set it up through ESPN, it's free to join, and I'm giving away Hoop Vision gear to the winners. First place gets this exclusive Hoop Vision hoodie that I'm wearing right now. And second through fifth place receive a dry fit Hoop Vision t-shirt. The link to sign up is in the description, and thank you as always for watching. If the first thing you do when joining a pool isn't to check the scoring system, you're doing something wrong. The scoring system is essential to identifying value in the bracket. Most pools use the 1 to 32 system. Each round is allocated a total of 32 points. Since there are 32 games played in the first round, each game is worth just one point. There are 16 games in the second round, so they're worth two points. So when we get to the national championship game, it's worth a whopping 32 points, meaning just that one game is worth the same amount as the 32 first round games. I should note here that ESPN makes things kind of confusing by adding a zero on the end. So first round games are worth 10 points and the championship is worth 320 under ESPN rules. But besides an extra zero, it's effectively the same system. With this scoring, it's almost impossible to win a large pool without correctly picking the national champ. The 32 points you get for picking a winner are simply too hard to overcome unless there's an underdog champion that no one in the pool picked. Like, let's say if Gordon Hayward's shot had taken a slightly different bounce in 2010. I won my pool last year with a total of 139 points. I had three out of the four Final Four teams, so that's eight points each. I had Baylor and Gonzaga in the championship game, that's another 32 points. And then I had Baylor winning it all for another 32. So why did I take Baylor even though I thought Gonzaga was the better team? Well, there were 213 entries in my pool. 96 of those people picked Gonzaga to win it all and just 24 picked Baylor. It's pretty simple. If I took the Zags and they won it all, I still would have needed to beat the other 96 entries that all got the 32 points from picking the correct champion. One out of 97 is just over a 1% chance, assuming all else is equal. A less popular selection like Baylor gives you significantly better odds. But of course, there's risk involved. There's a reason, after all, why so many people took the Zags in the first place. They were the favorite. Hindsight is 2020 now that we know they didn't win at all, but finding the best value comes from weighing the risk of an underdog pick against the reward of gaining points on your opponents. Let me explain in more detail. Whether you realize it or not, you're probably already familiar with the concept of bracket strategy. Let's go back to the 2018 tournament and rewrite some history. Imagine for a second if Virginia had beaten UMBC in the first round. Because it's a 116 matchup, there's a good chance that everyone in your pool picked Virginia. So if they had won, everyone would get one point effectively canceling out that game altogether. 
of course, in reality, UMBC won the game. So if you were lucky enough to pick the retrievers, you'd then move into first place in your pool all by yourself. That pick would be incredible value. Obviously, the problem with making such an extreme selection is what happens if you pick incorrectly. UMBC was a 20-point underdog entering that game. If things go more according to plan and you incorrectly pick the retrievers, now the entire pool jumps ahead of you. The same is true when picking deeper in the tournament. The popular choice can sometimes be the best choice, but the key is to weigh that popularity with the actual probability of success. That might sound confusing, so let's go back to the Baylor-Gonzaga example. As I said, I thought Gonzaga was the favorite, but I did have Baylor as a pretty close second. Let's say we determined the Zags had a 60% chance of winning the championship matchup. If we take 60% of 1%, that would give me just a 0.6% chance of winning the pool. Meanwhile, the 40% of 4% for Baylor gave me about 1.7% chance of winning. Those are still very low odds, but remember, they've been created under the assumption that all 24 Baylor entries are equally as likely to win. In reality, you, the person who is currently watching a nerdy video about bracket strategy, are probably just a little more serious about optimizing your bracket strategy than let's say this Baylor entry who picked Grand Canyon University over Iowa in the first round because they've always wanted to go to the Grand Canyon. So by identifying value picks in every round across the bracket, you can marginally improve the odds further in your favor. There is one minor problem here that you might already be thinking about. You don't actually get to see your opponent's picks until after the tourney has already started. But we can, however, approximate that info by looking at public pick percentages. As soon as the bracket comes out, ESPN starts continuously updating a cheat sheet of the most popular picks by round among all ESPN entries. It's a great way to estimate what the opponents in your pool are thinking. There are some other important tips for identifying value. Teams that are hot entering the tourney tend to be overvalued. Last year, Illinois was actually the second most popular pick to win it all ahead of Baylor. That's because the Illini had just won the Big Ten tournament, leading to some recency bias. Baylor had just lost to Oklahoma State in the Big 12 tournament. History has shown that the public overvalues recent results. The Blue Bloods also tend to be overvalued. There are definitely exceptions to this rule depending on the year, but it intuitively makes some sense that Duke and Kentucky would be popular selections given their name and large fan bases. Also, the context of the specific people in your pool matters. I'm a Villanova alumnus. If I compete in a pool against my college friends, Villanova is almost certainly going to be valued higher among that group of people than the general public. So think about how the specific context of your pool might affect selections. Another example of this is if you join the official Hoop Vision pool. I can pretty much guarantee you that everyone in the pool having watched this video is going to impact the selections. It will be especially hard to find value. So good luck with that one. A reminder, the link is in the description to join. Another point worth making is the size of the pool matters. The smaller the pool size, the less important value becomes. You might as well just pick a bunch of favorites if you're only competing against, let's say, five people. So now with all of that information, if you're watching this and thinking, yeah, I get the concept, but there's so much info to consider. I need more help. First of all, you're absolutely right. Optimizing bracket value is really a task that's best fit for a computer, not really for our feeble human brains. Fortunately, we have Team Rankings, the sponsor of this video. They have a bracket picks product that uses a machine learning algorithm that lets you put in all of your pool's information, like the scoring system and the number of people, and then spits out the optimal bracket or brackets with an S if you're entering more than one specifically for you. Since 2017, Team Rankings subscribers have reported over $1.75 million in bracket pool prizes. And every year, an average of 57% of their subscribers have reported
reported winning at least one bracket pool. That track record led to Wired Magazine doing a feature on their algorithm. I even used their research and analysis of bracket pools to help me create this video. And I highly recommend their product for anyone looking to get as big of an edge as possible this March. Just go to teamrankings.com slash hoopvision or click the link in the description to get 15% off their 2022 bracket picks, which includes tools for NCAA survivor and auction pools. You can also get up to 55% off of a yearly subscription. Thanks for watching and enjoy the madness.